What, do you, what would you say is the big question, the big issue with respect to the universe? Well, <clears throat> the situation is co in cosmology is so interesting at the moment because we've got to a stage where by and large, with some exceptions, cosmologists believe that space-time had a beginning. And what is more, that forces them to ask the question, well, what's behind that? What causes that to exist? That's a question you cannot avoid asking. And they ask it. They also notice that in the past 50 years or so, we've discovered that the constants of nature, the basic constants of physics, are very fine-tuned in order to make carbon-based life possible. And that raises a big question for someone like Stephen Hawking, who in his book The Grand Design, he says he sees this, and it demands an explanation. And then he goes on to say some people prefer the old explanation that God caused the universe to be, but that is not the answer of modern science. The answer of modern science, according to him, at that stage was in terms of a multiverse. And you can just see coming through that what C.S. Lewis beautifully calls chronological snobbery, because it's old, it's false. Well, I'm old, and I hope I'm not false. Um, and his view, and this is what got me onto this, was I was just staggered when I, raised, when I read his central argument in the Grand Design, best-selling book. Because there is a law of gravity, the universe can and will create itself from nothing. Well, I was staggered, and I wrote a book about it as a result, because it just struck me as absurd philosophically. Because there is a law of gravity, because there is something, the universe creates itself from nothing. Flat contradiction number one. And then saying, because there's a law of gravity, he didn't say because gravity exists, and that's a huge philosophical mistake. Laws don't create anything. They don't even move anything. Newton's laws of motion have never moved a billiard ball in the history of the universe. People with cues do that. And this alerted me to a very big gap in his understanding. And it was very interesting that virtually giving an obituary, the astronomer royal, Lord Rees, said very interestingly to my mind, he said, I know Stephen Hawking very well, and he knows very little philosophy and no theology, and we should not listen to a word he says on it. Now, that, I thought, isn't that fascinating? The trouble is, people do listen. Why did he listen? Because he is a famous and brilliant scientist. But as I often say, not every statement of a scientist is a statement of science. So what we've got, Ian, is a very interesting polarization. We're now reduced to a choice between God or nothing as responsible for the universe. And I think we have to push that very hard.